Using print statements is the most primitive way of debugging, right? No offense, but I assume, you know, because you're watching the video and everything, you're likely, you know, more of a beginner to this. And you probably just use print statements whenever you want to test if a script works, right? Like, okay, if, if this is true, then, you know, print this. But if, if this is false, then, you know, print that because, you know, you need to know if everything works. That works until you start actually having more complex scripts or just more scripts in general, right? Now, even if you don't have that, right? If you're just a beginner, you're like, oh, what is this guy talking about? Blah, 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 whatever. This is still going to be insanely valuable for you because debugging scripts, right? Knowing how to fix errors is the number one thing that's going to actually keep you motivated to learn. Because if you just see an error and you don't know how to fix it, it takes you a while. Well, then you, you just won't care, right? Like <laughs> you'll, you'll just quit, right? You'll just get, get annoyed. So this is where I discuss breakpoints. So let me show you, right? Let, let me, I'll just make a script inside server script service, just a regular server script, right? And then what I'll do is I will make it, I'll make a, I'll make a variable first of all. So I'll make a test variable, right? And I'll make it equal to 100, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if test variable is equal to 100, then we're gonna print yes, right? But then if it's not, then we print no, right? And then we could just print something like check completed, right? So we have a variable, we check if it's 100 or not, and then we print check completed, right? So something like this is how most people debug their code, right? So let's say you want to check if test var is that, so like you, you make it equal to 100, then like, let's say there's a bunch, let's just imagine there's like lots of code here, right? And then somewhere in this code, the test variable value may change. It might be 101, might be 90, might be negative 10, who knows, right? Um, and then if I play the game right now, right, then as you can see, there we go. So it says yes. So test variable is equal to 100 and it says check completed. I have no clue what this means. Infinite yield on core GUI, Roblox GUI, wait for child modules. That's, that's something on Roblox's end. I think, you know, again, don't worry about this, but the point is, we just successfully technically debugged code, yippee, right? So this is where I'll, I'll actually show you how to use a breakpoint. The idea of a breakpoint is that you place it on a line of code, right? And then as the script begins running, when it enters that breakpoint, by default, it stops the code. So let me show you what I mean, right? We have this test variable here. So we, you know, we make it equal, equal to 100. But then what if... What I wanted to do is I wanted to make a variable and then for some reason, like, you know, like just for testing purposes, I didn't want this code to run. What I can do is, you know, after I set the variable to 100, I'll just go over here, right? So like, as you can, as you can see, there, there's like a red circle that pops up and I'll click, I'll just click, right? This is a break point. Now, if I play the game, you'll notice that it goes into debugging mode, right? So yeah, the rendering is paused for debugging. So as you can see, nothing's being printed, right? So it's stopped over here, right? So right now it's it's over here. So like the test variable, the test variable should be equal to 100. Everything's nice, but it's not printing this. Now, this is like basically what a breakpoint is. The next thing I want to talk to you about is you see this like arrow thing, right? This is the next line that it's gonna like actually run, right? So 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 like so like this line is, is print, right? So it's just waiting to see if it's if it's allowed to print this line or not. And the way we tell it what it can or cannot do are these things over here, right? So there should be a tab here called script, which should automatically open for you. It's where, you know, you, you see the server, re resume, stop. Do you have step into, step over, and step out? So what step out does is it just automatically just like, you know, like just runs all the, all the code, right? Um, and then I'll have to stop the game and then play it again. Um, that's like the one annoying thing about debugging. Step into simply runs the next line of code, right? And like it only runs a line of code, which actually does something. So like, like an if statement doesn't really do anything. So it just skips right past the print because print actually does something. It doesn't, you know, go to else because I mean, what is else doing? Else isn't really doing much, right? So it, it, it then is going to from yes, it's going to skip to no, then it's going to skip to uh, print check completed. Uh, and the way we skip, and then we just say step into, so we click this. So then it runs that, 
and then it prints yes, right? So, so it, it runs, you know, our if statement, and now it's ready to print check completed. So then we can say step into, and then it finishes that line, and then it says check completed. And now our code is basically done, right? Um, so yeah, so, so step into is how you kind of continue line by line from a breakpoint. Now step over only matters when we're dealing with functions. So let me show you what I mean. If over here I create a function, right? Local function, and I'll call it check value, right? And then um, this check value will take the, I don't know, just the, it, it, it's gonna take what it's gonna take a yes or no parameter right so we'll just say yes or no right so we have a function called check value which is gonna take something which here is referred to as yes or no and then we're just gonna say um if or no we're just gonna print yes or no right print yes or no like so so we're gonna make a function where we just give it a value and it just prints that value right so here, what we can do is instead of printing yes, we can call the function. So check value, yes, or no, check value, yes. So it, it's going to print out yes. And then here we could, you know, check value, no. Now, the reason I'm, I'm doing it like this is just to sh show you what step over uh, does as opposed to step into. In a real game, never do this. Just use a print statement. It's not worth it to make functions <laughs> um, or like functions as, as simple as these, right? So if I play the game right now, so what step into does, right? So we have a breakpoint over here is if I step into the check value script, I mean the, the check value function, right? So it's going to run the function and what step into does is it's going to go inside of the function like that. See, so when it runs the function, then it goes inside the function like so. And then, okay, okay, that's done. That's done. Okay. So now it prints it out, right? Then it goes into here. So the step into actually goes like inside of functions. Um, however, step over, what step over does is like, it still runs the function, right? So it's, it's still gonna print out yes or no, but it doesn't go inside of it. So it run, it, it just runs the function, it just, it just but it, it doesn't go inside like so. So step over, yeah, see, so it doesn't bother going inside the function. So it just runs the function. Uh, but but it's it, like, yeah, print out yes, check completed. So it's the same thing, but it steps over the function, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna delete this because this is insanely stupid. Please don't do this in a real game. Um, let's see, print yes, print no. The other thing I want to talk to about breakpoints, right? Uh, which is I think the main part. So you can actually disable breakpoints like this. You can you you can you can click uh, to toggle like whether they're enabled or disabled. Uh, to delete a breakpoint, you just right click and click delete. You can right click and click disable breakpoints. However, the main thing about breakpoints is that you can edit a breakpoint. Um, so I know I know it's a lot, but you know, don't worry, we'll get through this. Um, the way a breakpoint actually like runs all of these like checks, right, is it goes from top to bottom. So first it you know does the condition, then the log message, then the con it, whether continue execution is true, then whether to remove breakpoint at hit on hit, then it actually sees whether it should trigger at something i know i know i'm like this isn't making any sense right now i just i need to have i need you to have this in mind that like it goes from top to bottom right um and for this case i'm going to delete the if statement like so so we just have a test variable and then we just have a print that says check completed so the only thing oh i deleted it by accident so the only thing that's stopping this print statement from actually occurring is this breakpoint so I'm going to edit it. So the very first thing that we're able to change is the condition. And uh, if you put nothing in there, then the breakpoint will like stop. It's going to stop the script. It's not going to run this, uh, like th this print statement. However, if we put a condition here, so for example, like something, if something is equal to 42, so if, 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 if we put a condition here, which is true, then the breakpoint will not activate. And so it's gonna just let the code continue running. So for example, we could say test var, which is the name of our variable, equal to 100. So if this is true, right, then the breakpoint will not activate and it's just gonna, it's gonna print check completed, right? So if I'm gonna save this, and as you can see, it has this like nice little symbol on it now. Um, and, then, and, then I, and then I play. Yeah, so as you can see, the breakpoint works, right? So because the condition is true, 
the breakpoint is actually working. It's halting the code. Now, if the breakpoint was false, so if test variable, if we're like, oh, what if it's equal to 102, right? Which it isn't, it's 100. So then this would be equal to false. So if the condition is equal to false, then the breakpoint does nothing. Yeah, then the game just runs, the script just runs, check completed runs, just like that, right? So the breakpoint will only not run if the, well, like, like uh, in terms of conditions, right? So like, uh, if, if, all you, if all you're doing is the condition, then the breakpoint will not run if this is equal to false. However, if this is either equal to true, um, or you just leave this blank, right? Then it's going to halt the code. Um, so for the sake of this, we can just test var equal. Yeah, sure. Let, let's, let's just keep it at this, right? The, the next thing is the log message. And what the log message does is if this is equal to true, then we're going to print something out. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah. So for example, and, and by the way, this has to be a string, right? Um, because what it does is it takes this log message and it puts it inside a print statement, right? So like anything you put here, uh, write it the same as you would inside like the print brackets. So like, if you want to add text, don't just, add, don't just write text like this. You actually have to put them inside of quotation marks, right? And you, and you can add variables by doing the two dots and then variable, or you can do a comma and then add the variable, right? So for example, what I could do is I could say like log message is going to be error, you know, I'll, I'll add, add a colon and then we're going to write the variable value along with the error. So if I save this right now, and if I hit play, as you can see, it prints out error and then it prints out the test variable value, which is 100, right? And the reason it's printing it out, but I disabled it by accident. Um, and it also it's called a log point. Like whenever you have a log thing, it changes icons and it's, it's called the log point now, but like, th don't, don't bother with that. It's still a break point. I'll, 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 I'll like, just so you don't get confused, it's still a breakpoint, right? Um, so yeah, this log message will only run if the breakpoint actually stops, right? So if this condition is either true or has you know nothing in it, then the log message will run. So here we're printing out error, and then I'm adding, you know, this variable to it, right? Um, so yeah, we have that. And again, this this only runs if, like I said, so if this is, if if we do something like this, right, where condi the condition is going to be false then the log message will not run because the breakpoint will not like continue running, right? So if, yeah, like, yeah, like if the condition is false, it just runs the code and it doesn't send us any logs. Um, so if I, let's see. Yeah, then we have options. So continue execution is pretty simple, right? If this is on, then, um, you know, you know like it, it, checks, it checks for the condition, right? And like, okay, if the condition is true, right? So if test variable is equal to 100, then it's it's still gonna print out the log message, you know, if we have one, but then it's not gonna halt the code. So it's gonna continue going. So if I, you know, save the game right now, so test variable is at 100. So it still gives us the log with error 100, but it, it doesn't halt the script anymore. Like it still runs the script, right? So this is nice for like, if you don't want to like actually affect the script, you just wanna get like, like just a print message, right? This is where it basically becomes an if statement, right? Like, like, like you, you could make an if statement that does the same thing, basically. Um, but this, this is just more compact, I would say, right? Just, just more, more simple. Um, and then there's a thing called remove breakpoint on hit. So when you, when the breakpoint is actually, you know, like, like, like hit, when, when the condition is true. Um, I, I'm actually, I'm not too sure if this removes it just like whenever you go on the breakpoint or only if this condition is actually like true or empty, right? Um, but effectively what this will do is, let's say we have like a loop, right? And then, you know, we have a breakpoint like in the beginning of the loop. And then, you know, we go on the breakpoint, it, you know, it does its thing. And then we, you know, keep going through the loop and then we go back to on the top of the loop. If remove breakpoint on hit was true, then the first time we go through this breakpoint, like the first loop, it just gets deleted, right? So then like the second time we loop, it doesn't see this this breakpoint. But then if this is false, if we don't remove the breakpoint, then every single loop, this breakpoint is gonna continue activating, right? Um, so yeah, so like just whenever you, you go through this breakpoint, it just removes itself. So that's what this means, which I, I don't have a point to set this to true because we don't have any loops. So I'll just keep this at false. 
And the last thing about breakpoints is this thing called trigger at. By default, it's at all context, but then you could set it to custom context, which is going to give you client, server, and edit. So clients means like, does it, will this breakpoint activate when it's running on a, like a server, on like a local script, right? Server means, is it going to activate on a server script? And edit means, is it going to, is it going to activate while we're like debugging, while we're actually editing inside of studio? And as you can actually see, if I uncheck this, it's the same thing as, as disabling it, right? Um, yeah. So edit, edit, like only make, like edit makes it so that it doesn't, like if you uncheck edit, it means that it doesn't work while you're debugging, but it's going to work in like a real game, if that makes sense, right? Um, and then, because that's what it's, it says current, right? Because we're currently editing. Um, yeah, and, but if I were to uncheck the server, for example, because this is a server script, this breakpoint actually won't do anything. And I'm actually going to remove continue execution, like so, right? Because we, we want it to stop, right? But then because I uncheck the server, so it's not going to trigger at the server, it's not going to do anything. I don't, yeah, it's, it, it doesn't even print out the log or anything. It just says check completed. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and that's that's basically it. And in, in case you're confused why this is even an option, like, like why would I do this when the script is a server script, right? Like, like what's the point of doing this if it's on a server script? Isn't that just the same as disabling it? Well, actually, no, because what if this is in a module script, right? And module scripts can be used by both server scripts and client scripts, right? Or like local scripts. So like, like, you, like sometimes you don't know whether like this is going to be running on the server or on the clients, right? Um, or maybe if you're using run context, you could actually change the script to a local script from here or back to a server script or legacy, which I'll be honest, man, I don't know the difference between legacy and server. I think legacy is like when you make the script as in the beginning. So if I make a local script, then it's, it doesn't even have that. Yeah. So it, it seems like legacy just makes, keeps it a server script. And then this, I'm not too sure. Right. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just bringing examples for the little breakpoint. Um, so yeah, we have the legacy. Um, so again, you know, to, to, to go, to go from the top, this is the condition, right? So if this if this is equal to true, or if we just leave this as, as blank, then the breakpoint is gonna like activate. Um, and then if it's true or it's blank, then it's gonna print out this log message. Um, this if this is true, then it's gonna continue running the code. So like it, it's still gonna print out any log message if the condition is true or you know there's nothing here, but it's gonna continue running the code. Remove breakpoint. Like when we actually activate the breakpoint, it it it, it removes it, right? Um, and then trigger at just lets you know, like, will this breakpoint activate if it's on the client, if it's on the server or while we're editing, which is current, which is what we're doing right now. Um, and then to, you know, delete a breakpoint or a log, I don't know, it's stupid name system, bro. I don't know. <laughs> then you delete, delete the log point like so. Um, and then, yeah, that's basically it. So that's, you just, you just learned a wonderful debugging technique. Um, I will give, give, give me like a couple of seconds. I, I, I will promote, I, I have like this like thing where you give me your email. Um, and then I send you like cool stuff from time to time, like, like beginner advice. So if you're a beginner and you, you know, you want some cool information, then I'll, I'll have a, um, like a link to my newsletter in the comments. So you can just give me your email. Cause of course, like you would trust me for email. I'm a, I'm a very trustworthy man, of, of course. Right. So yeah, go, go do that. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you found this valuable. If there's anything I got wrong with the breakpoints, by the way, do let me know because I did just discover them like a week ago. So like, I'm not too advanced in breakpoints. Like it doesn't seem like there's too much for them, but again, I could be wrong. So if, if I miss something or I got something just bluntly incorrect, you know, feel free to just absolutely annihilate me in the comments. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. And we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.